Hi, my name is Robert Shelley with Shelley Law, and my law firm assists dentists with employment contract issues. Today, I'm going to talk about whether a non-compete is enforceable against a dentist. So, uh, first, there are a handful of states in the United States uh, where non-competes are completely unenforceable. However, you could count them on one hand. Uh, so, it is very likely, if you're watching this video, the state that you're in does acknowledge reasonable and enforceable non-competes. So I'm just going to talk about the states where they are enforceable and then kind of what, what they would look at of whether it's reasonable or enforceable. So in your contract, uh, there's going to be a section called restrictive covenants. And then, and then in that section, it's going to have a non-solicitation clause, a non-disparagement clause, some kind of confidentiality provisions, and then a non-compete. And so a non-compete simply stops you from working in your specialty for a period of time within a specific geographic area. So what would be considered reasonable for all of those things? So first, uh, it will likely list what you can't do. And so for the most part, it will say the practice of dentistry. Uh, if you have uh, kind of a multi-specialty practice and you can do different things and you're only doing one of those things for the employer, I would make certain that the specialty restricted is the one that you're only doing for that employer. That way you have some other options after the contract ends uh, to do other things. So like for instance, maybe you're doing orthodontics for a practice and you could still do general dentistry. Uh, maybe it's a year long non-compete you don't want to move, you could at least do general dentistry for a year and then hop back to do orthodontics after the year is over with. So that's a little bit into what is listed as a specialty in the non-compete. As far as how long, most non-competes for dentists last somewhere between one to two years. If it's longer than that, I think it would likely be unenforceable. Um, you always want a shorter non-compete, obviously, uh, so if someone's offering you a non-compete that's three years or five years, that's completely unacceptable and very likely uh, unenforceable. As far as the geographic limitation, that's kind of where the, I guess, the negotiation usually turns to. So as these corporate dental practices continue to gobble up, these dentist-owned practices, they continue to multiply uh, and in a city, they may have multiple locations. In a big city, dozens of locations. So if the non-compete states, you can't work within, let's just say, 10 miles of every location of the employer, and they have 10 locations in your city, it could effectively knock you out of practicing in that city, which I don't believe would be considered reasonable uh, and would be likely unenforceable. So you want to make certain when it comes to how many locations the non-compete attaches to, it's only the locations that you're working at and then no more than two locations, ideally. If it was just 10 to 15 miles from your primary practice location, that would be considered reasonable and enforceable as well. Now, okay, let's say you sign a non-compete and then you think, all right, they're not going to go after me. I'm just going to break it anyway. And then you establish a practice within the geographic limited area. What can happen? Well, they could sue you. Uh, so if your contract has an arbitration clause, they could go to arbitration over it. They could go to the court and uh, obtain a temporary restraining order which, or an injunction, which would stop you from working. Uh, and they could sue you for one, breaching the contract, and then two, the damages associated with you establishing a practice within that area. So I would not suggest signing an agreement with a non-compete and then just expecting to ignore it. Uh, I think that's a pretty uh, short-sighted way of thinking about a contract law uh, and uh, a, a pretty terrible strategy. Uh, I mean, I'm surprised how many dentists I speak to that say, oh, I took, spoke to a colleague and they say, you know, non-competes are totally unenforceable. Unless you're in the state where they actually are, I would not sign anything 
just saying, well, I'll sign it, but I'll expect that they can't enforce it down the road. Um, so uh, yes, non-competes are very likely enforceable against the dentist as long as they're considered reasonable. And you need to, you know, for some people, uh, let's say they, you know, have grew up in a city and want to move back. Maybe they're living there and they have kids in school and they just absolutely cannot move or there's family there for whatever reason, having a very onerous non-compete can be make a great job, potentially terrible if you have to move from the city to practice for whatever the limited period is. So that's something you definitely want to negotiate and take a hard look at. It can be a deal breaker for some people. Uh, so hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions about your employment contract, you can always contact my law firm uh, at the phone number listed below in the description, or you can reach us through our website, ShellyLaw.com. If you thought this video was helpful, please like, subscribe to the channel. We issue uh, videos every single day, and I appreciate you watching the video. Thanks.